This is Madam Progress Sunday, your integrated science teacher. Today we will be continuing from where we stopped. We are going to learn how to use measuring instruments and and then find how to find density of any given object and that of relative density. Different quantities have different instruments with which they are measured. For example, length. Length have different instruments with which it is measured. For example, the survey tape, the tape measure, the meter rule, and many others that we can think of. The instruments used to measure length are the meter rule, the survey tape measure, measuring tape, ruler, as I earlier mentioned. We also have the veneer caliper, measure short distance, internal and external diameters of whole object. It measures to the precision of 0.1 mm. So when we talk of the veneer caliper, it has two jaws which are used to measure the internal and the external uh, diameter of any given uh, hollow object. For example, a cylinder, a hollow cylinder. You can measure the diameter of a hollow cylinder using the veneer caliper. We also have the micrometer screw gauge. On the other hand, it's used to measure extremely short distances to the precision of 0.01 mm. So this one can be used to measure small objects, very extreme. For example, the thickness of a paper, cloth, and other things that you can think of. With so the micrometer screw gauge, is used to hold the, or measure very short or extremely short distances that you can think of to the precision of 0.01, unlike that of the veneer caliper, which is 0.1 millimeters. Thermometer. Thermometer is used to uh, know the temperature of an object. That's to determine how hot or cold an object is, to determine the degree of hotness or cold of, of any given object. For example, to determine the temperature of the human body, we need to use what we call the thermometer. And thermometers come in various forms. For example, we have the pyrometer, liquid in glass thermometer, the gas in glass thermometer, and many others that you can think of. So thermometers are used for these purposes. We have the hydrometer. Hydrometers measure the density of a liquid. For example, the density of water, the density of oil, the density of the soft drinks that we've been taking. So that's what hydrometers are used for. We have balances. They are used to measure the masses of any given object. For example, the mass of a stone, the mass of the human body, the mass of your PC, the mass of your mobile phone, and any other objects that you can think of. We use balances to measure uh, these, uh, these objects, their masses. And some of the balances that we have are the beam balance, top palm balance, electronic balance. So they are of various forms. Yeah. When we talk of volumes, volume 2 has a different uh, measuring instrument with which it can be measured. We have the measuring cylinder, pipette, burette, volumetric flask, beaker, and so many others you can think of. Uh, this, this is the summary of what I just mentioned. When you look at them, these are their units. We have the, meet, the length, which is meter, mass, which is kilogram, time, second. Volume the cubic centimeter, cubic uh, uh, millimeters, uh, cubic uh, milliliters, and so many. We also have the atmospheric pressure that's Pascal. We have electric potential volt or voltage. We have electric current that's ampere. We also have the luminous intensity that's candela. We have amount of substance that's the mode. And some of these ones have subunits such as the centimeter for length and then the millimeter. We also have grams for, for mass, we have milliseconds for time, cubic uh, uh, millimeters for volume, we also have millivolt for uh, the electric potential, milliampere for uh, electric current. So these are the sub units that we can think of. So let's look at some of these. We have the beam balance, electronic balance, the lever balance, we have the, the barometer, stopwatch, ammeter, voltmeter. Calipers, micrometer screw gear, survey step, uh, graduated cylinder syringe, we have the bullet, we have the pipette, volumetric flask, and then we have the hydrometer. So these are some of the measuring instruments that I just uh, spoke of. Look at how to obtain units of some quantities. For example, how we can obtain the unit of force, how we can obtain the unit of volume, how we can obtain the unit of a given area. So we are coming to look at how can get all such things. 
so we have a volume of a regular block so a regular block is a block that uh, which is dimension are definite and can be measured so if you are able to measure the length of the regular block the breadth of the regular block and that of the height of the regular block it's easy to find this volume and all the length breadth and then the, the height they are all distances which is measured in meter so length the first length has to do with the first m the second length has to do second one that's the breadth has to do with the second m the third uh, the third one that's the high that's do the third m so when in indices when you are multiplying uh, three variables or three uh, numbers with the same basis you add your powers so these three m when you are going to add your powers they are standing to the power of one and we are, if you are going to add one plus one plus one that will give us the three known as the cubic meter for the volume of a regular block so the next one we have the cylinder to find the volume of a cylinder that's pi r square h pi r square h and the pi here has to do with a, a constant the area has to do with the a radius of the cylinder the height has to do with the the height of the cylinder so when you look at this the radius square means m times m and the h means the last m so when you add the powers like i earlier on mentioned here you get the cubic meter for the volume of the cylinder when you also look at the sphere we have 4 on 3 pi r cube. The cube here means m times m times m. And that's how the volume of the sphere is gotten, or the unit of a sphere is gotten. We also have the cone. Cone has to do with 1 third pi r square l. And then the pi here is a constant. The r is the radius of the cone. The l is the slant height of the cone. So r square means m times m in the l. Which is also a distance measured in meters is also m so when you multiply all these three units you will get what we call the cubic unit a uh, cubic meter for the unit of a, a cone which is the unit of a cone we also have work when we talk of work work has to do with force multiplied by distance or force times distance and force is measured in newton distance is measured in meter so force times distance will give us newton meter and that's the unit for work which is which can also be expressed as joules we have velocity change of displacement on time that's meter per second change on displacement displacement has to do with distance traveled and distance too is measured in meter and time is also measured in second so when you divide distance covered or the displacement covered on time you will get what we call uh, meter per second and that's the unit for velocity also we have potential difference potential difference has to do with work done on charge that's joules on coulombs also have quantity of electricity which is as current times time so that's uh, ampere second we also have what we call electrical resistance that's potential difference on current that's uh, what we call a uh, v on a that's volt uh, per, per ampere we also have power power has to do with work done on time for you to uh, call something power that means work must be done within a given period of time and that's joules on second work is made in joules time is made in second that's given as joule per second and that's the unit for power we also look at force force has to do with mass times acceleration and mass is measured in kilograms mass is measured in kilograms and then uh, acceleration is measured in meter per second squared so when you multiply it you get kilogram meter per second squared which can also be expressed as newton and that is the unit for what we call force so finally we are going to look at area area is given as length times breadth and length and that of the breadth they are all distances covered and distances are measured in meters so when you add the powers of the two two dimensions that's the length and the breadth we get what we call a uh, meter squared and that is the unit for area that's how some of the uh, quantities their units are obtained so you can go and then look on other so now we are going to look at what we call density when we say density density has to do with the the mass per unit volume of a given object when we say the density of a book is the mass of the book per unit volume of the book and that will give us what we call the density density is measured or its unit is uh, the kilogram kilogram per cubic meter that's what we call density 
The density of a substance is its mass per unit volume. Density is expressed mathematically as density is equal to mass on volume or mass divided by volume. That's what we call density. Density is measured in kilogram per cubic meter or it can also be measured in kilogram per centimeter cube. Yeah. So the SI unit of mass is kilogram and that of the volume is the cubic meter or the cubic centimeter. So when you divide the mass on uh, uh, to the volume, that's why we will get the kilogram per cubic centimeter and that's the unit of density. Okay. I'm going to measure the density of a liquid. I'm going to measure the density of a liquid. So to measure the density of a liquid, what you need to do is that you measure the mass of a clean measuring cylinder. The mass of a clean measuring cylinder. After measuring, you pour a known volume of liquid into the measuring cylinder and record the volume V. Okay, so we've gotten the volume of the, the liquid. Now, what we do is that we measure the mass of both measuring cylinder and, and liquid and record it as m2 so now we've uh, found the mass of both the measuring cylinder and that of the liquid that's m2 so for us to get the mass of the liquid all we need to do is that we subtract mass of the beaker or the measuring cylinder from the mass of both the measuring cylinder and that of the liquid and that is m2 minus m1 so the volume of the liquid is given as m2 minus m1 and hence and hence, the, the density of the liquid is given as M, uh, M2 minus M1 all over the volume of the liquid or the known liquid that we've poured into the, the measuring cylinder. So this is how to measure the volume of a, of a liquid, or to measure the density of a liquid instead of volume. Okay. So we are going to the next. When we talk of a regular object, a regular object is an object whose dimensions can be measured. They are definite and can be measured using a ruler. That's what we call a regular object. So let's try to find the density of a regular object, for example, or let's say a book. So what we need to do is that if we need to measure the length of the book, to measure the breadth of the book, and that of the height of the book. And then we also measure the mass of the book. So what we need to do is that we measure the length times breadth and that of the height and that will give us the volume of the book. So when we take the mass of the book divided by the volume of the book, it will give us the density of the book. And then we determine the book as an regular or as a regular object. So this is how it goes. To f find the density of a regular object, example the book, find its volume by multiplying its length, breadth and height. We also uh, with the aid of a balance, measure mass of the book. So use a balance, and I mentioned the balance earlier on. We have different balances. We can use the electronic balance, the chemical, or the beam balance. So hence, the density of the book has been given as mass of the book divided by the volume of the book. We're going to also measure the density of an irregular object. Irregular objects are objects which, in which their dimensions cannot are not definite and cannot be measured directly with a ruler we need to use a different procedure in which we can uh, arrive at their densities so let's see the procedures how it goes so what we do is that we measure and record the mass of the object as m for example the mass of a stone as m using a beam or electronic balance also we pour water into a measuring cylinder and record the volume as v1 so when we pour water into a measuring cylinder we record the volume as v1 and then we tie a string or a thread around the irregular object and lower it gently into the measuring cylinder. Like we take a stone and then we tie it with a, a, a string and then we gently drop it into the measuring cylinder. We see that the volume of the, the, the liquid or the water in the cylinder will rise. And then we then record the second volume as V2. So for us to get the volume of the irregular object, the stone, so we do V2 minus V1. The final velocity minus the initial velocity and that is the volume of the irregular object so what we do next is that we then take the mass of the irregular object for example the stone and then divide it to the ma uh, the volume of the irregular object the stone that's v2 minus v this is giving us uh, uh, m on v2 minus v1 so this is how the experiment goes, as demonstrated uh, on the picture below. We are going to work example on densities. We are going to work example on density. 
Okay, so the first example goes like this. Find the density of a piece of rock which measures 70 kilograms and when put into a measuring cylinder containing 32 centimeter cube of water, the water level rose to 67 centimeter cube. So what we need to do is that we find uh, uh, the formula of a density. So when we get the formula of a density, we are we'll be able to get our parameters which will enable us to uh, work out the density of the piece of rock. So now we know the mass of the rock to be 70 kilograms. The volume of the rock is gotten by subtracting 32 from 67. So we have volume of a uh, rock or stone as 35 centimeter cube after the subtraction. So what we need to do now is that we take 70 70 kilograms divided by 35 centimeters cube and that will give us the density of the piece of rock in kilogram per centimeter cube so by substitution this is what we get we get 5 kilogram per centimeter cube and that is the volume or the density that's the density of the uh, piece of rock that we've worked for just give you a trial and then we'll be done for today's lesson so the second example goes like this the mass of a ball bearing is 2 kg its volume is recorded as 1.6 meter uh, cubic meter this one is just straightforward so all we need to do is just to uh, get a formula of a density and just fix it in and we get the density of the ball bearing but density is given as mass over volume so the mass of the ball bearing is given as 2 kg so 2 kg divided by its volume that's 1.6 cubic meter which will give us something like this so there's the mass there's the volume and then the density of the ball bearing is given as 2.0 kg divided by 1.6 cubic meter which is 1.25 kg per cubic meter and that is the density of the ball bearing so these few examples are under density so you try it and then see whether you get the answer or not so the third question goes like a sphere of diameter 0.8 meters has a mass of 16 kilograms determine its density so this one all they've given us a formula volume of a sphere is 4 third pi r cube and then they've given us pi to be 22 over 7 so all we need to do is just to divide the diameter into two to get the radius and we'll fix it into the formula and then we are done okay thanks for watching please like comment share and then subscribe for more videos uh, on topics like this